out. So David said, I know I'll go to see my child again. You'll go to see your child again. But in the meantime, the best thing you could do is stand up for Jesus. Stand up for souls. Amen? And reach out to them that they can be saved. And stand up for the little babies. And now let your little baby be a champion for you. Say, yeah, go mom, go dad. Now you're saved. You know Jesus. Now you're standing up for us little guys or us little girls. Amen? But most of all, you want to please the fatherhood heart of God. Amen? Who loves the little ones, who created them in his image, who gave them life. So, take a stand for Jesus. The best way, by the way, the best way, I believe personally, I mentioned prayer, I mentioned supporting uh, pro-life ministries that are biblical, I mentioned preaching, these are all ways, shining the light, I mentioned all these different ways that we can become very proactive. One of the most effective things you could do, probably the most effective thing you could do besides pray, is witness to the lost. Because when a soul gets saved, it's not trying to make somebody, hey, listen to Rush Limbaugh. You know, then this guy's going to get right and he'll be a Republican and a conservative. And Republicans and conservatives go to hell without Jesus, just like liberals and Democrats. Amen? And their hearts need to be changed too. It's when someone's heart is changed by Jesus Christ. Just give me a hand and let's just be honest. How many of you were so-called pro-choice before you came to Jesus? Or you had some pro-choice ideas? Raise your hands. Many, many, many people here. Okay? What changed? God changed your heart. Amen? And the best way to see our country change is by leading people to Jesus. Now, I have no strange ideas that all of a sudden everybody's going to become a Christian. Because I know Jesus said the way is narrow. That leads to life and broad way leads to destruction. But more people can be changed by the gospel because it's the power of God to salvation to everyone that believes to the Jew first and also the Greek. Amen? So I encourage you to preach the gospel to people. And if someone's had an abortion, let them know that they can be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. It's not something they have to carry around to their grave because they can be forgiven and be freed from the guilt of that death through the blood of Jesus. There's no other way. In fact, it's a good way to share the gospel, actually, is talking about uh, abortion. But you know what? We need to support Leanne uh, and ministries like Leanne through prayer and uh, through encouragement and uh, through funds, which we do, and you do through uh, our giving to Blessed Hope. We support a lot of ministries more and more all the time. But that's one uh, or a few exciting ministries together, but the pro-life ministry uh, supporting that's wonderful. But you know what? How many of us are just going to keep this message in our hearts? Or how many of us are going to say, you know what? I'm going to look for opportunities to share with people. Right? Because more and more people are becoming pro-life, by the way. And what happened in Germany didn't continue forever. Maybe in our country we can continue praying and maybe our country will change before the end in this area. I don't know. God only knows. We're becoming more liberal in some ways. And in some ways, some people are becoming more conservative on this issue. But in the meantime, we just need to let God be God and do our part. Amen. And deliver those who are being led to death, as Proverbs says. But if, bottom line, it's all about Jesus. No matter who you are, or what you've heard tonight, or what you've done in your past, that's why we're Christians. That's why we meet tonight, because... We want life. We choose Jesus. He gives us eternal life. He washes away our sins. And he works all things together for the good for those who love him and who are the called according to his purpose. Amen? So he can work even the mistakes you made and the fabric of, of sanctification in your life to where in the end you become more like Jesus. And that's how he does it all. I don't know. He's God. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name and we love you so much. And I pray, Father, if there's anybody uh, here or uh, anybody listening to this by means of tape, that you would reach out to their hearts, that you would show them your great love, and that they are made in your image, and that you love them, and you don't want to abort them. You don't want them to go to hell, Father. And if they go to hell, it won't be because you're aborting them. It'll be a choice because they didn't want to serve Jesus, but they didn't want you, but they wanted to rebel against you and not serve you. Father, your son said, he that's not with me is against me. So whoever's not with him, Father, whether they're here or listening by tape, is against him. If they're not for Christ, your word says they're anti-Christ. I pray that you would reach their hearts and they turn to you right now and be saved. For your word says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that they'd recognize that Jesus paid the penalty for their sins. The penalty they deserve, he paid on the cross. And if that they believe on him and what he did for them and how he died and rose again on the third day, they trust him 
to repent, Father, have a change of mind, and put their faith in Him, turn to Him, Father. He says they'll be saved. I pray that they would do that right now. And for those of us who have been saved and are being changed, I pray that you would continue to increase our knowledge of you and your ways, and you can tr increase our service so we can go out and share the good news and be proactive and not passive. We pray all of this to your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Uh, do me a favor. Give someone a hug, man. Someone else who is made in God's image. God bless you guys.